certainly His grace and His mercy, amen. Certainly, I did not, uh, we, we do that down for my wife on today, amen. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Certainly, thank you to each and every one of you that uh, uh, were either in prayer or those that have been with us this morning as we share with um, the Holy Springs United Church of Christ, amen. So, this is our second uh, service, the second Sunday in a row, but we thank God for sustainability and how He's just given us strength. Uh, to keep going, and so we thank God, amen, for all things that you do give honor to, amen. I've been to Sam's home today, again, we thank God for her. And we amen to, amen, she always uh, helped minister better, amen. We thank God for her on today. Let's give her a hand, amen. And certainly to all of our officers and our officials in, in their respective places, we just thank God again for the opportunity he has allowed us to come together. And we never come into God's house Amen. Thanking, amen, that God owes us something. But we owe him so much for what he has done for us. What can you give God for? Or what amount can you put on another day? How much does one more day cost? I mean, we had all the money in the world. And you really think about that. I don't care how much money you have. That does not, amen, assure you that you're going to wake up in the morning. But the fact that God woke us up. And some of us are waiting to strike rich. Let me tell you something, you are rich when God gives you one more day. Amen, amen, amen. You are rich because you cannot buy another day. And so we thank God for another opportunity He's allowed us to come together. All right, so we've already did our worship declaration and our uh, morning prayer. At this time, I uh, asked if I was secretary, she would uh, prepare herself to come forward uh, with our weekly observations uh, at this time. So we have our weekly observations. So as to give her your undivided attention. Good afternoon, Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church, Apex Disciples, guests, and friends. For the benefit of our guests and friends, our weekly services are as follows. Sunday school every Sunday morning beginning at 10.30 a.m. Sunday worship service Sunday afternoon at 12 p.m. on Facebook Live. Hour of Power Wednesday nights beginning at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Our weekly announced um, observations are, if you plan to attend worship service at the Grove, Please remember to register via our church website or weekly email. Should you experience any issues while attempting to register, contact the church via email. There will be no hour of power this Wednesday, but Oak Grove will have prayer here November 3rd at 7 p.m. All are welcome. October is National Clergy Appreciation Month a time set aside to recognize the contributions and service of pastors, priests, reverends, ministers, and all other clergy members. Today at The Grove, we are honoring our very own evangelist, Linda Sims. Thank you, Evangelist Sims, for the seeds you plant and disciples you nurture. Thank you, Evangelist Sims, for the sermons you preach and the prayers you lift up. Thank you, Evangelist Sims, for the wise counsel and the words of encouragement. Yeah. Thank, you for the, thank you for your sacrifice and service to the Oak Road Missionary Baptist Church. Yeah. We honor you today. Yeah. Yeah. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. How can we pray for you this week? Let us know by going to our website, oakgrovembcapex.org, and submitting your confidential prayer request. Let's continue to be in prayer for our sick, shut in and bereaved disciples, friends, and their families. These are our observations for the week. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for the announcement that we've heard in our hearing from our secretary. And certainly, uh, we just want to uh, echo uh, one thing, uh, as we did in the huddle, is very important Tuesday is election day. So if you have not uh, voted uh, or, uh, at this point, uh, we know that there is an election in uh, Apex, Holly Springs, uh, and uh, in other municipalities. And so um, but our main focus is where we are at. And 
so we know that uh, we uh, have some work to do, and I certainly I think it's very timely that this is the first uh, Wednesday, so after the election on Tuesday, regardless of who uh, God uh, allows to step into the seat, we need to be in prayer for them, amen? And so uh, let's let's gather uh, on two on Wednesday night for prayer. Well, gather on Tuesday in your homes for prayer too. <laughs> uh, let's be uh, be in prayer for uh, uh, those that are, are on the ballot. Amen. So uh, we just done ourselves to that. Uh, it's a praying time, and we should never stop and cease from praying. Amen. Amen. Even in good times, we ought to be praying. Amen. Let's not get so high up. Amen. Sometimes we don't think about it. If you, even in the moment you hungry. You can even bless your food, and uh, not knowing, Amen, that that prayer uh, may may hold back something, uh, may hold back something. So let's, and I said it, say, well, we have to just make make sure and put it in our minds each day to pray, talk to God. And that's what prayer is. You don't have to pray like Pastor Cobb. You don't have to pray like Vander Sims or Deacon or Trustee. Just you talk to God like you talk to anyone else. Um, and I've learned uh, that um, the more you talk to Him, God will talk back to you. And you'll know what he would have you to do. So that's very important. Uh, we thank God again. We just want to say thank you. This We know the old girl. We have been uh, on the go this past month. And you have certainly been uh, in 100% uh, participation. We just thank God for all our disciples. And we're uh, ending this last quarter of the year. We know that the homecoming ended uh, the fiscal year for the church. And now we're going into the new year. Just want to say thank you to each and every disciple that has did what they did, uh, that have gone out of their way to make sure that we keep our church afloat. And we are in an unprecedented time. We have never been, none of us in here have ever been in a, in this, well, you've been in a situation where you've never been in a pandemic before. Uh, because none of us were here when the last pandemic was reported in 1918, which was the Spanish flu, else you'd be over the age of 100 years old. And we don't have anyone, but it's very important. We have been Amen. We have been afloat this entire time. And we thank God for keeping our doors open. We have not had any COVID outbreak within our Come on. Amen. Scary situation. And it's not because we've been so good, but God has been so good to us. Uh, not because we've been spraying down pews and enforcing mask mandates and taking taking temperature checks, which we do and um, will continue to do, uh, but it's because God has just been gracious to us. And we, I don't know about y'all, but I think if you didn't give me a piece of mind each week when I don't have to call nobody and say, guess what, we don't have a, you know, we have not had that to happen here. And, with, and there's, some, there's been some churches that have had to close down because of COVID outbreaks. And well, they're better than us, we're better than them. No, it's because God has been so gracious to us. And when you learn, the older I get, the more I appreciate one more day. One more day. If God just give me one more day, I'll get the job. If God give me one more day, I'll get the car. But you can't get it. You can't get the car or the job if you don't have another day. So I thank God. The older I get, the more I just thank God for one more day. Being able to see, being able to taste, food on the table. Are you, are you thankful that God has the black food? Give us that breakthrough. We've been praying a long time. 
And that song was really just set, set in my spirit while I'm waiting. Yeah. While I'm sitting there waiting on God to open up the door, and I'm not getting ahead of what God is going to do to do. I can't just sit there and complain.
we didn't say, I think, I might, and he, I, I got a goal. He says, I will. In other words, I've got to tell myself, regardless of how dark it gets. Because sometimes it's like it's a thousand, dark as a thousand midnights. And you're in the midst of a trying situation. But while you're waiting, you have to transition in your thinking. So regardless of what it looks like, I'm going to still trust God. Everybody's going to trust God.
we got the weekly reminders out of the way, we got the offering out of the way. Now we come up to the main attraction, and that is the Word of God. That is what keeps us. Amen. Certainly, we have one on today that is capable and able. And we just thank God for the to Sims. All of us, uh, the majority of us, if not all of us, know who she is. Uh, she is certainly one of our associates here at Oak Grove. She's just been so faithful. Uh, we thank God for her and how she's just been steadfast in the things of God. Uh, we thank God for how she just continues to labor here. Uh, since she has been here, she has been working and she has been busy. And we just thank God for uh, the example that she has set for so many of us and um, a, a strong intercessor. She believes in intercessory prayer, and when many, but now we live in a time where people are most of them just concerned about themselves, we thank God that she's concerned about others, and yeah. so we thank God for her. And she's a psalmist in her own right, amen. And she's a certainly powerful preacher, a powerful yeah. teacher, and certainly she has been on the wall. Now, this is not her first sermon, <laughs> uh, and so she has been on the wall uh, for a long time, and certainly we thank God for uh, her being steadfast in the things of God. And who else? Uh, to close out the end of our clergy appreciation month, uh, uh, or this month, shall I say, uh, which is clergy appreciation month, and they're not very own evangelist sales. We thank God for her and the blessing that she is to Oak Grove. Yeah. Is she not a blessing to us? Yeah. 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 Amen. She is a blessing to us. Amen. So she's going to come after the praise team. If you have, uh, I don't know if, if, if I've hijacked y'all songs or what. <laughs> uh, but amen. We're going to sing the same song again. What you're going to do is up to you. We thank God for you. God bless you, praise team. You all have been amen. Yeah. Going and going and going to get hot. You all. Amen. For what you are doing. Now, we could get him a better hand than that. Come on, Dad. These ladies are saying. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you want to go back out of my office and pull my hat and put it in my hand. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, we thank God for these, for these musicians as well. God bless these gentlemen. They've been playing. Amen. 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 Come on, church. Let's give them a hand. They went with us on last Sunday. Amen. And they were, uh, they were, they were there. So we thank God for. Uh, they play for. Uh, they play for other churches, uh, and they're so faithful uh, here. Uh, so we thank God for them as well. All right. So the praise is going to come back and give us one selection. Now, brother Moore, I know what you need. You have a mic problem, so we got the mic worked out. But I can make. I don't know if it's too late or not um, for you. So we're going to fix that. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, the praise is going to come and give us uh, one more selection. And after the selection of the praise team, next we here with preaching authority will be that of our evangelist, Linda Marie Sims. Amen. Let us say thank God for the preacher. All right.
goodness and for his mercy. God is God all by himself. Yeah. I honor such a great pastor. Yeah. yeah. Such a great yeah. friend. Yeah. 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 I can truly say my pastor, our pastor, Elder Jamar Cobb. I honor the precious jewel that God gave him, and that is Lady Cobb. Yeah. I honor you. I honor you to Mother and Deacon Denning in their absence, to Deacon and Mother Upperman, Brother John, to all the leaders, missionaries, members. Praise team, thank God for you. Thank God for you. To our awesome musicians. I just thank God for all you too. Is it the mayor? <laughs> Council, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm seeing something further than <laughs> I'm honored to have my best friend of 18 years, Amanda, here with me. I thank God for you for traveling from Nightingale Amen. <laughs> to my ride and die. <laughs> Sister Beverly, I do thank you. For my mother, who I know is watching via live stream, who wanted to be here today. But couldn't, but she will be here next Sunday because I'm going to get my mama. <laughs> Miss my mama. I'm ready for my mama to come home. Right. <laughs> to all my family, friends, and co workers that are watching via live stream, thank you. Um, before we go to the word, it is Clergy Appreciation Month. And I know you don't know, <laughs> but I wanted to just say, Pastor, I have something for you and Lady Kyle. For Clergy Appreciation Month. It's just a little something, something. <laughs> I love y'all. I'll continue with praying. Amen. You, you know how we do. Thank you. <laughs> I love my pastor. Thank you. I love him with a brother and son. Him and Lady Cobb. Because yeah. I'm not going to leave her out because they're one. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, it's now time for the word. Yeah. <laughs> Lord have mercy. God is so good and he's so faithful. Yeah. And I pray that this word will bless you as it has blessed me. I will be taking my text from John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. And before we read the uh, scripture, I'm going to just have a brief word of prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, it is now time for the preached word to come forth. Lord God, sit Linda down, that the greater one stands, O oh God. Oh God, I ask that you speak to us, O oh God. Meet us at our point of need, O oh God. Touch those who are watching via the cyber sanctuary, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask that you just have your way. For this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 I'm going to read from the King James Version first, and then I will read from the Amplified Version. Again, that is John chapter 6, starting at the first verse, and I will be reading down to the 15th verse. And the word of God reads, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is in the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was not. When Jesus then looked up his eyes and saw a great company coming,
come unto him. He saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennies worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracles that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet should come into the world. And when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. You may have your seats. For a subject today, what do you have that the king can use? All right. Subtitle, your little can turn into much when you put it into God's hands. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. I'm Y'all have to forgive me if I get tickled because this word just is blessing me. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. After this, Jesus went to the farther side of, of the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. That is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd was following him because they had seen the signs, miracles, which he continually performed upon those who were sick. And Jesus walked up the mountainside and sat there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was approaching. Jesus looked up then, and seeing that a vast multitude was coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that all these people may eat? But he said this to prove, to test him, for he well knew what he was about to do. Philip answered him, 200 pennies, which equates to $40, worth of bread is not enough that everyone may receive even a little. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a little boy here who has with him five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they, so, what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make all the people recline, which means to sit down. Now, the ground was covered with thick grass at the spot, so the men threw themselves down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to the reclining people. So also he did with the fish as much as they wanted. When they had all enough, he said to his disciples, gather up now the fragments, the broken pieces that are left over. What God can do with broken pieces? Okay, I'm just gonna go back to the text. Hallelujah. That nothing be, may be lost and wasted. So accordingly, they gathered them up and they filled 12 small hand baskets with fragments left over by those who had eaten from the five barley loaves. And when the people saw the sign, the miracle that Jesus had performed, they began saying, surely, and beyond a doubt, this is the prophet who is, who is to come into the world. Then Jesus, knowing that they meant to come and seize him, 
that they might make him king withdrew again to the hillside by himself alone. Amen. We know that God's word is already blessed. Amen. Now the feeding of the 5,000 can be found in all four gospels. Right. It can be found in Matthew 14, 13 through 21, Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 45, Luke chapter 9, verses 10 through 20, and then John chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. But for today's sermon, I will be taking my text from John 6, 1 through 15. But I will be referencing the other scriptures. Now, God will often take little things that we have and make them much. As we journey through the text today, you will see how one young man's lunch fed a multitude of people. Yes, God can take your little and make it much. Yes. You remember the account of the widow who had enough flour and oil left to make a meal for her and her son, and they planned to die? That was from 1 Kings 17, 7 through 16. But the man of God said, make me a cake first. Yes. Your flour and your oil ain't going to run out. Yes. Also, mm, you can find in 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7, where the woman had a debt that she could not pay mm -hmm. and feared that her sons would be taken to clear her debt. Elisha asked, what shall I do for thee? What do you have in the house? The woman responded, a pot of oil. You know the story. He said, tell your sons to go borrow them some vessels. Mm -hmm. yes. And then once you borrow the borrow vessels, borrow all the ones that you can. Then go in and shut the door. And as she began to pour the oil, it kept flowing and kept flowing and kept flowing and kept flowing. And when all those vessels were filled, she was like, is there another vessel in the house? Mm -hmm. Amen. Guess what? She was able to pay off her debt. Yeah. She had more than enough. Yeah. What do you have that the king can use right. on today. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about the text with the feeding of the 5,000 and how it's correlated in all four of the Gospels. What I found so interesting was Matthew noted the timing of the feeding of the 5,000 mm -hmm. after the death of John the Baptist. You know the story. Herod had imprisoned John because John had accused him of adultery and married Herodias, his wife. Herodias, wife of Herod's brother, Philip. Now Herod both respected and feared John as he knew that John was a godly man and that his accusations were true. Mm. It's custom that the kings of Salome danced before King Herod. <clears throat> it, was, it was custom that the kings that the kings of Pers Persia were accustomed to reject no petition that was preferred to them during this entertainment, during this party. Well, Herod, not thinking, made an oath and promised to give Salome whatever she asked. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that her mother and her were concocting on the side, mm -hmm. and the mother had instructed her to give John the Baptist's head on a platter. So after the death of John the Baptist, the disciples came and got his body and buried it, and then they went on to tell Jesus. Well, in Mark chapter 6, verse 30, and Luke chapter 9, verse 10, it refers to the disciples as apostles. Hmm. And they were returning from a preaching and healing tour. But in the book of John, it says that Jesus departed by ship to a desert place. And the multitude that had heard about him and had seen him had followed him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Luke denotes the desert, the deserted place belonging to Bethsaida. Now, Bethsaida was a town on the northeastern coast of the Sea of Galilee. 
And in John 1, it notes that Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee. Now in Matthew, the people had heard of Jesus leaving and followed on foot out of the city. But in Mark, the people saw that the disciples and Jesus were departing. In Luke, the people knew Jesus, and Luke, the people knew Jesus had left and they followed him. But in John, the people had saw the miracles that Jesus had performed. You see how it's correlated between the four Gospels? Matthew 14 and 14 states, Jesus had compassion and healed the sick. In Mark 6 and 34, it states, Jesus had compassion towards them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Mm. So he taught them. Yeah. Luke 9 and 11 says, Jesus, Jesus received the multitude and taught them the kingdom of God and healed the sick. And John, the people saw the miracle that Jesus had done. Also, this was the third Passover since our Lord's baptism and entrance of his public ministry. Now, so I'm kind of giving you some background. Now I'm just going to kind of paraphrase the next few verses. So in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the disciples stated, Jesus, we have a little situation here. We have been here in this desert place all day. There's a whole lot of people and it is now evening. These people are looking tired. Their stomachs are growling, which means they're hangry. Amen. They're hangry. They're not hungry, they're hangry. So the disciples said, Jesus, can't we just send them on? Let them just go on their way. Let them go on, find their, you know, let them go on in these little towns and find them something to eat so we can just kind of sit back and rest. It's been a long day. Mm -hmm. But in John 5, 1, it states, Jesus lifted his eyes and saw the crowd coming. He said, no, don't send them away. I know the disciples probably said in their minds, say, what, Jesus? Well, what are we going to do? They hungry, they tired. What are we going to do with all these people? First point. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to be very long. What appears to be a problem is an opportunity for God to show who he is. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. Right. Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for the good to those who love God, yeah. and to those who are called according to his purpose. Yeah. Mm. Now Jesus, <laughs> him being who he is, and I am now around chapter, I'm sorry, verse 7. So Jesus asked Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Mm -hmm. I know Philip was like, I know you're not talking to me, Jesus. Say what? Well, since Philip, Andrew, and Peter were from the area, that would be one of the common questions that you would ask. Since you're from the area, what are we going to get them something to eat? The Bible, I looked up in the Bible dictionary and it says, states that Bethsaida mm -hmm. is the name of it means house of fish. Mm -hmm. So it's just like Jesus. He already knew the answer before he asked Philip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he already knew what he was going to do, but he just wanted to test Philip. Mm -hmm. So Philip responds, 200 pennies worth of bread is not sufficient for them. <laughs> 200 denarii was roughly eight months' wages. All right. Philip says that is not enough for everyone to get a bite of food. Right. <laughs> y'all know when y'all get a sandwich and you, you want to take, you, you, especially when you're hungry, uh -huh. you're going to take a big bite out of that sandwich. Yeah. A bite. That's like a little nip. But God was saying, what do we already have? Yeah. 
What's here? Uh -huh. That we can use. Uh -huh. So tell me, what do you have mm. that the king can use? Uh -huh. In Matthew, it states they had five loaves and two fishes. Uh -huh. In Mark, it states the disciples should go ask, should we go buy 200 pennies worth of bread? Mm. Jesus responds, well, how many loaves have we got? Mm -hmm. And when they knew, they said, five loaves and two fish. In mm -hmm. Luke, it states, they said they have five loaves and two fishes. Uh -huh. <laughs> but here in John, it states, Andrew says, there is a lag. Uh -huh. In the book of John, it only talks about Andrew, Philip, and the lad. Uh -huh. And he says, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fishes. Now let me tell you a little bit about barley. Uh -huh. Barley was a common food for the poor. Yes. The wealthier people ate wheat. Now, let me tell you about the size of the loaf of, the, of this bread. Y'all know those Hawaiian sweet dinner rolls. <laughs> you know that one you can only eat, you can't just eat one, and you know you gotta sometimes hide because you can eat the whole thing. Point 
to. When you see there is a need, give it all to Jesus. Well, and watch him take your little and make it much. Yeah. And make it much. Yeah. You just gotta put it into the master's hands and 
fourth point. Oh, bro, do you realize what God is doing in this house? Yeah. 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 Do you realize what he's doing? Yeah. yeah. When I first came here, which was two years ago, it was just a few, faithful few. Mm -hmm. You kept coming. Yeah. You kept coming. Kept giving thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> kept turning it over to God. Kept praying. Kept praising. Yes. And as we were doing it, yeah. God just started multiplying. Yeah. 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 You see what God took that little and he's making it much. Yeah. Yeah. And if he did that over a course of two years, if we band together, Be afraid mm. to use 
those gifts and talents. There are so many resources right here in the house that can be used. Yes. What do you have that the king can use? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to step in, to step out on faith. I'm just going to give you a, a, a little bit of something. After the feeding of the multitude, they Jesus sent the disciples to cross over the sea. Y'all know about the storm rose and the disciples got scared. Now, I don't understand how you can have such little faith. When they looked up and they saw Jesus walking across the water. Now, I will tell you, I taught about this back in August, but God gave me a nugget yesterday morning. Lord, when the time for me to preach it, I just want to give you this. Are you a water walker? Oh, you better go now. Come on now. Jesus. Are you a water walker? But in order to be a water walker, you gotta what? You gotta have some faith and you gotta do what? You gotta get out the boat. So what am I trying to say? Don't sit on your do nothing.
little becomes much when we place it in the hands of the Lord. So we thank God again for the message. Amen. We thank God for the messenger. And certainly that was something that we can feast upon. All of us have something. Your something may not be my something, but all of us have something that we can offer up to the Lord. Amen. Who would ever thought that a lad's lunch, and we really think about it as Evangelist Sims was sharing with us, those two small fish, or as the text says, fishes and those five barley loaves fed over 5,000. Hard to, in your mind, imagine how anything of that nature, how you can feed 5,000 with just two fish, five loaves of bread that still have, get this, it say five baskets, but 12 baskets left over. That's nobody but the hand of God. And so when God gets involved with something, amen, certainly he makes something beautiful out of it. So let's continue to give the Lord what we have, amen, our talents, our gifts, our mind, he wants it all. Yeah. Amen, and we'll give it to him, he will bless it. Amen, again, we thank God again for being the symbol today. Amen, certainly there's one that, amen, let's give her another hand. Amen, we have one that is not simple today, amen, you may come, amen, there's one that is, amen, a backside Christian, you may come, amen, one that is in uh, need of a church home. If you desire, you may come at this time. I mean, if you're on the virtual platform, amen, you may send correspondence to our uh, email, amen, oakgrovebc, uh, apex at gmail.com. You can go to our website as well, amen, and you can uh, see that where you can submit your request, amen. If you need a prayer, amen, you may send that, amen. Again, we'll be here on Wednesday night together for a prayer, amen. We thank God again for all things and for who he is and what he is in our lives. Amen. When we're weak, he makes us strong. Amen. If it was not for him, where would we be? Amen. All right, we have one that is coming. Amen. For us. Amen.
about that an hour out for a whole week. That's 24 hours in a day. Amen. And God, we come together for one hour, which is not a long period of time. You think about how many hours and how many minutes you have in a week. So let's come together, those that are able body, to come together on Wednesday night. All right, I think we have a presentation for this coming. Amen.
take yourself out, take your mother, take mother uh, Rose out, amen, take uh, whoever, <laughs> take yourself out, amen, take yourself out, amen. Get you some rest, get you some rest. She, she's always going, amen, she's uh, by vocational life, as myself, so she works a job. So people think that, amen, uh, ministry is not a part-time job. I don't know anybody, you know, when they pass me, they've been, no, ministry is a full-time, because you can't say my hours is from eight to five. Somebody gets sick, you gotta, you gotta meet the needs. So thank God for, for, for her and what she is. Amen. So we're gonna give this to you. Amen. Okay, all right. I'm, come on. We got another presentation. Thank you, everybody. Amen. It really is an energy and honor to serve. Amen. You, ever since I came here, you greeted me in love. And when you can work with some people like that, thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's not easy, but I thank God. I thank God for you all. Know that I'm always praying and interceding yes. on your behalf. Amen. Well, I'm not going to cry. This is my buddy. This is my pal. <laughs> when I have to cry or anything, problems or issues I have, sometimes I don't have to call her. She calls me oh. because she feels me. And I thank God today for you. I wanted to give you these roses. I said I was going to say from Amanda and I because we want you to slow down and smell the roses. Mm. Ah. You've been running a long time. You said, I'm tired. I said, Lord, please give us a medicine spirit to sit for us down. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like Pastor Paul was saying, you got to have wisdom and know when to sit it down. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 I know when I used to go to church, one of the, the, the founders of the church, one day I was running for the catering doing this and that. She walked over to me and she said, Go home. I said, But I need to feed. She said, I said, Go home. I'm glad she did, and I'm glad that I listened because that, that next day I was through. Mm -hmm. I was through. But I want you to smell the rose. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the best is yet to come. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. That is so on behalf of my family. And you have to uh, Councilwoman Kelly can attest. Thank she has stayed the whole oh God bless your heart. <laughs> uh, but we uh, we have uh, this has been a busy weekend. We had holiday fest yesterday, so it was from 10 to 4. And then we we're out there all day and I left, went to a funeral, then came back. And uh, in the midst of all that, uh, we, uh, I, neglect, I realized I left my car, I mean, left my, left the car in the other car. So, but I don't want to put this off another week. This is only from, from my family, uh, certainly. So they, that's the reason why it's not in the because it's my fault, not my wife. Uh, but uh, we want to say thank you again to all that you do for us, amen. And we need to, we want to shower you with gifts. Yeah. You deserve to be showered. Yeah. You labor, amen, you've been consistent, even uh, with issues, amen, that have uh, the enemy attacking you physically. Yeah. Amen. You have you have never come and given a partial sacrifice. You always give God your best. Yeah. And it's it is shown. And you take a, such a load off of me and my wife, uh, praying, interceding when you come. Amen. That's one thing I thank God about is we we got married in, in April, and uh, certainly uh, since that time I had to work about well, everybody know their role, everybody know their place. I just thank God for you being a true woman of God. And so on behalf of my wife and myself, Amen. We want to give you this. This ain't no token. This is a check, <laughs> and I give this my fault, so I give you the card next time I see. Easy. Uh, but the card, it, it is for a closure of feature and appreciation. But I didn't want to delay that. Wanted to give you that uh, to know that you are not an afterthought. But this is for our heart. Well, God bless you. Amen. We praise God for her again. I think it does all with the presentation. Oh, no, man. Come on with it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no. Bless your heart. I know we can. Let's start. Come on, sister. Amen. I was I was going to do something, just kind of flip something to her, but so she would always try to push away. Uh -huh. So I figure if I do it now, That's so right. quick, uh -huh. she's not going to push it back on me. Uh -huh. But she knows that I love her. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. She is a sister. She tries to be her mom. <laughs> But she is definitely a woman of God, uh -huh. and I'm glad to be here on this journey with her. And you guys do have a jewel, Amen. and yes. so yes. I appreciate you honoring her as well. But she does so much. You guys don't see all that she does, but she is all.
always thinking of you and she loves everybody. But I love you. She's been with me on my ministry journey. You know, I'm going to get you for that. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, you got me good, buddy. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. But she has been on my ministry journey with me. When I first moved to North Carolina, I lived in Durham. My mother and my, and my mother's husband and their family lived in Leland. And I would travel to Leland for two years every weekend. Just how you see me serving here, that's just how I served there. And when I knew that God was calling me to ministry, and I said, Amanda, I'm going to have my, do my initial sermon. And she said, I, I'll be there. And she drove from Goldsboro to be with me on that day. Amen. And she has been about this ministry. We work, we work together. I used to be her supervisor. <laughs> and we developed such a friendship. We were in school together. <laughs> um, I would travel from, and then when I moved down to Leland, um, we, all, we never lost touch. So I would come up this way and spend time, and she, she's just been there. She's that, her and Beverly are, and my, and my friend Teresa, who her and her husband were going to be here today, but he took her away for their anniversary, so I know that they're here with me in spirit. But they are two women that I can just be Linda. That's right. That's right. Because sometimes I, you, I just, I, I, right. it's not evangelism. Right. It's a ministry. It's a pastor note. Yes. It's a hat you wear 24-7. But sometimes you just need to be you. Yes. Right. You know, they've seen the tears. Yes. They've heard me cry and intercede for family and friends and coworkers and blase, blase, blase. So I thank God for these two because they also keep me humble and keep me straight. That's a good attitude in check. Girl, you don't go on, wait to the side. So I thank God because they keep me accountable. Yes. And you need people like that That's in right. your life That's to right. keep you accountable. Right. So I thank God for you and my baby girl, my daughter. <laughs> thank you, Sister Beverly. Thank you, Old Girl Pastor, Lady Cobb. Thank y'all so much. I'm not used to <laughs> Get used to it. We ain't been yet. So thank you, Sister. Amen. Come. Amen. We, amen. Get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. We you have to take time to love uh, on one another.
favorite guy was the church member. <laughs> 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 Watch that cool. Amen. Amen. Hey, all right. Is that all the presentations? Thank you. Amen. Give yourselves a hand for your. I know we can look at this unusual, but, but let me say this and we're closing. Amen. Vanda Sims, you need to just get you to keep the love on you. Amen. Amen. I'm saying that because that's one thing I have to do. Because we, we, when you give, it's hard to receive. But you don't realize that you block your blessing yeah. and that person's blessing yeah. when you turn away. Amen. It's hard. So I, I, I know we're working on that. But get, and when people love you, let them celebrate you. Yeah. Amen. This is all. Amen. And, and, and funerals, we rock in caskets and stuff. And, 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 you know what I mean? We want to jump in the casket and take me. Amen. And all this type of thing. We do it now while they're alive and can see it. Yeah. Amen. So to Oprah, oh, oh, thank you so much. We sit the chorus from the South Carolina Disciples and we make sure we didn't include you on it. Amen. And uh, Sunday, you all responded very well. Thank you so much for your giving on today as we bless this woman of God. All right, Amen. Do you want to come back and uh, close this out? All right, Amen. So we thank God. All right, you said all you know, it's time to go, and we are hungry. Yeah. <laughs> amen. 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 So, and uh, thank you so much, Councilwoman Kelly. But stay the whole We are praying for you. Amen. We're praying for you. You have to deal on and have to come to All right. We'll up lift your hands. Amen. Now may the grace of God and love of Christ in the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit press rule about us henceforth and forevermore. Let us say amen. 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 amen.